Hi guys, welcome to a, another beer review and uh, hopefully this is going to be a pretty special one. And today we're going back to a brewery who I've got a hell of a lot of time for and that is of course Crew Republic coming out of Munich. And today we are looking at the Rest in Peace Barley Wine which is clocking in at an absolutely teeny tiny 10.1% with an IBU count of 65 and first and foremost just such a striking looking beer black label with gold design on uh, it certainly stands out and you know I did a video a while ago now of my like top five favorite breweries in Germany or craft breweries in Germany to look out for and one of the things that I really like about Brew Public is the beers are designed uniform, but each style has its own specific crown. And how fantastic is that? And of course you get the same motif on the neck of the bottle as well. And uh, yeah, I've had this for a few months now. I was planning on aging it, but I have no patience and yeah. I. I'm really in the mood to try this, to be honest. And look at that. I got this for one euro ninety-nine cents. A ten point one percent craft barley wine for two euros. Picks up from a place called Galleria Galleria Gal Galleria can't even say that word for whatever reason. Galleria Kaufhof, which is sort of like Debenhams, I suppose, here in Germany. Or the German equivalent of something like Debenhams. And they're having a sale where you could get pretty much all of the core range of Crew Republic beers for like one ninety nine. And when I saw that they've got a barley wine for two euros, I was like, gotta have it. I mean, I'd probably even pay like three or four euros and maybe upwards because I'm a fan of Crew Republic. And I've had one of their barley wines in the past as part of the sort of experimental series which I really did enjoy. So I'm going to put the Crew Public playlist down below so you can check them out for yourselves. And I believe that my good friend here on YouTube, James, at Rampant My Beer Reviews, will have a review of this one up. It's not uploaded as I'm reviewing this one, but I saw that he uh, picked this up when he was visiting in Germany and I was lucky enough to uh, meet up with him for the day here in Regensburg. So I'm going to put his link down below um, to his channel, and of course, if if his video is uploaded by the time I get this uploaded, then of course I welcome you to check it out for yourself. So uh, yeah, fantastic looking beer so far, and you've got a nice little scale like they always put on the labels on their beers. So colour is three out of five, uh, bitterness three out of five. Hoppiness, 2 out of 5. Maltiness, 5 out of 5. Realise that I'm terribly off shot there, off camera. And awesomeness, 5 out of 5. So, um, yeah. A barley wine. And I've got a freshly made, homemade pizza to go with this. I'm not too sure if that would be the first uh, food pairing that people would have with a barley wine. And uh, yeah, now they lost a little bit of it then with my uh, chin wagon. But yeah, barley wines are a style that um, I've had criminally little experience with. And they're one of those beer styles where, just by their nature, it's not where you can, like, oh, I'm just going to casually drink a barley wine now. I mean, fair play to you if you like doing that. But to me, there's, there's something about the barley wine where it's like, under the right circumstances, it could be absolutely amazing. Um, it is something of a an acquired taste, I find. And it's a style that I'm still getting used to. But I say all that, and I'm just here on a Saturday night, and I'm like, I just feel like drinking my barley wine. So I'm going to drink my damn barley wine. So I poured it into my uh, favourite snifter glass. And... Uh, when you hold it up to the light, it's a lovely sort of a orangey, rusty, yet ruby red beer. So many tiny particulates floating around. Of course, when you don't have the uh, privilege of direct light for the video, 
when you're watching this, uh, it just looks really quite dark. But if I can hold it, I mean, look at that. Yeah, so you can actually see, look how like red that is. I mean, it, getting a lot of light bleed as well, just due to the nature. But when I do hold it up to like lovely sort of coppery, ruby red tones, just loads of little bits and bobs floating around in that beer. Absolutely mesmerising. And uh, yeah, of course you get some particulates inside, like a little cloud. Beer poured with about half a finger's worth of a slightly off-white head. Let me just uh, turn the camera that way a little bit so you can actually see me properly. Not that you really want to see me at all. But uh, yeah, definitely looks nice. Um, it's a little bit, I don't know, maybe it's because I've not had too many, but that's a little bit paler than I remember the last few barley wines that I've had. But anyway, looks good. Let's give it a sniff. And it's definitely got that sort of like sweet, malty aroma. But it's not really like a strong caramel or treacle molasses sort of sweetness. There's a really big hit of like berries in this one. Maybe a very slight dusting of like a milk chocolate. I tell you what, for a beer that's approaching well past ten percent, not getting any booziness on the nose at all. Maybe like a sweet, slightly um caramelized sherry sort of aroma like when you've cooked off the alcohol off a nice sweet cooking sherry that's where they really the only telltale sign that there's actual alcohol in this beer but yeah uh there is a slight caramel maltiness but like i said it's more of a, a fruity dark berry sort of tone almost like a chocolate covered cherries or something like that but yeah, it smells nice, very dessert-like. And nice and subtle as well. I'm sure in a few minutes' time, if I was to smell it again, I'd probably get something else completely different. But now more, get more like cakey, like gingerbread sort of aromas. But I'm going to stop smelling it because I could go on for ages about the aroma alone. Let's give it a taste. Frost. Mm. I'm getting like slight imperial porter characteristics. Lovely chocolatey flavours coming through on this one. A hell of a lot more than on the aroma. Yeah, it's like a chocolate-covered gingerbread. Because you get that, like, spicy tone coming from, like, cinnamon, uh, ginger, of course. Like a granulated ginger. It's a lot more cakey and indulgent on the flavour. You do get those slight berry tones, but it's almost like when you've got, like, a, a sandwich cake... And you've got like maybe a, some sort of marmalade or jam in between to help bond the cake. It's that sort of flavour. And yet, yeah, it's marmalade. It's chocolate. It's gingerbread. And it's like a nice, indulgent marmalade. <clears throat> no booziness on the flavour. The only alcohol you get, excuse me, is as it's going down. It warms up your throat there and intensifies a little bit as it's going down. Excuse me, a little bit more carbonated than I was expecting, but yeah, 10.1%. You're only getting that from the actual flavours of the beer as opposed to the alcohol presence and booziness 
That's really, really lovely bear, this. But yeah, I'm getting like images of some of these nice, deserty Imperial porters or uh, Imperial stouts. But then you get that like classic, like abundance of malt, different sorts of malts coming through. That helps differentiate it from being something like a, a stout or a, a porter. But yeah, there's that slight. It's not really a smokiness, it's that like very slight dryness that you get with those beers, which is a little bit present in this one. But yeah, those spice tones are lovely. A little bit prickly on the tongue. Almost as if there's like a very mild chili character. Yeah, this is a very unique barley wine indeed. And I'm actually really, really enjoying it. I'm almost, as well, now I'm thinking about it, getting, like, characteristics of, like, a, a Heller's Doppelbock. Yeah, it's like a, a lovely mishmash of different styles that come together, and they work fantastically. I'm not sure if this beer was actually born from one of the experimental barley wines that they've done. Well, yeah, it's it's a little bit different. It's got its own little intricacies. It's a very robust and complex beer. And the barley wines that I've had have been a little bit more of the, the like classic British variety, where you get that sweetness, but you also get that earthiness. The body is a little bit lighter than I was expecting, but it's not a, a light-bodied beer by any stretch. Very nice, subtle hop bitterness on the back end, which mixes well with that alcohol warmth. Yeah, it would have been interesting, actually, if I'd have picked up a couple of bottles of this, to be honest. And drank it as it is now, and then drank it again. Um, when those some of those flavours have mellowed out. Now, I've never tried a, an aged barley wine, so... I can't like say, oh, it would taste like this. I could imagine it tastes like this, but I could imagine this being a much smoother beer because that carbonation and that upper end of medium body sort of make it really quite a, a drinkable beer. Mix out with the fact that that ABV is masked beautifully. And I could even imagine if you were to like make a gravy or something with this or even use it as part of a sauce in the dessert yeah there's so much going on and i don't even think i've like lightly scraped the top of the iceberg with this one it's a good job i'm putting james's review down below because he's going to give you a much more spot-on review of this and some might say why are you uploading this but it's like, let your inexperience shine through. You know, don't bullshit or anything like that. I mean, yeah, I've not had too much experience with the barley wine style overall. But I kind of like the idea of sharing this journey with you guys as well. I mean, as a beer, just on its own, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. And I can't really think of any specific barley wines that I can compare this to. And again, I haven't had that many barley wines in general, so it's not like I can like say, well, it's really to style, you know, it's 10 out of 10 for style or anything like that. I just think this is a lovely beer. And it's actually quite a dangerous one. Because the only reason why you're going to sip on this is because of those complex flavours as opposed to, oh, it's a 10.1% beer. It's amazing how breweries can mask ABVs like this. But, um, yeah, this is a... It's a lovely beer. It really, really is. 
and I was not expecting it to be as cakey and dessert-like on the palate. I was, ex I was expecting that, like, malty sweetness. But it is literally like a chocolate-coloured gingerbread that you'd probably get around Christmas time. This would be perfect on Christmas Day after your big meal. Skip the dessert. Skip the Christmas pudding. Have a bottle of this. And uh, it's one of those beers that would be perfect to, a few days later, see the new year in. It's a perfect winter beer. It really, really is. Maybe all these German, traditional German breweries should brew a barley wine for Christmas. How amazing would that be? That would be absolutely awesome. Anyway, I've gone on for 15 minutes already. It's a, it's a long review, but... Yeah, this is... Take it from me. This is a, a knockout beer. It really, really is. I'm getting like very slight peated smoky tones out. I'm, I'm going to stop giving you tasting notes because I've gone on for way, way too long. So, uh, yeah, it's another fantastic beer from Crew Republic. Uh, a real unsung hero in the craft brewing scene. Um, in my opinion, anyway. So, uh, yeah, if I've somehow managed to entice you, give this beer a try if you get the opportunity to. If you have tried it, of course, let me know your thoughts and opinions. As I said, I will put James's link down below if it's up uploaded, but as soon as it is uploaded, it will be included down below, because I'm sure he'll give you a much more specific and on-point review. But I kind of like doing these like long videos where I don't actually make a single point whatsoever, because I feel like videos like this, your passion sort of shines through, and sort of overtakes your inexperience. And I always say, every video that I make is as much of an education for me as it is for potential people uh, watching the video itself. And uh, yeah, I think this beer is slowly starting to get to me because uh, I'm just talking absolute utter nonsense. But um, yeah. It's a Liebkuchen beer. It's a Christmas Liebkuchen beer covered in chocolate. It's amazing. It's a lovely beer. I can't fault it. I really can't fault it as a beer. I cannot fault it. Um, so it, it's a 10 out of 10 from me. It's just a, a wonderful, wonderful beer. And I'm just kicking myself that I didn't pick up two bottles so I could age one and see what happens if any flavours mellow, or if any flavours come into play. But, um, yeah, fantastic stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's a nearly 20 minute video from the Clueless Drinker. If you've sat through this one, you've got my eternal gratitude. And, uh, yeah, check out Crew Republic, check out my Crew Republic playlist, check out my teeny weeny barley wine playlist as well. Check out James's channel and his review. And of course, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. Thank you guys for watching. And I shall hopefully see you later. Frost. Don't wait, Peter.